Hello and welcome to day 67 of 365 Days Towards Racial Change. My name is Tom Lenz Nyback. Thanks for sticking around. We're chugging right along. Uh, we're here talking about black issues, black people, black folks, uh, white life, power, privilege, um, black struggle, all the above. I'm here, um, I'm finding uh, two important thoughts emerging. Uh, as we discourse here, uh, first thought has two parts. Uh, one, does the black slave mind prevail from slavery? Are blacks uh, passing down slave behaviors from generation to generation? And conversely, uh, does white entitlement, privilege, power get passed down from generation to generation? Are they uh, intuitively... Uh, passing on these legacies of uh, uh, of entitlement to one another, stemming from slavery. Um, formed by a man named Dr. Claude Anderson. You look up his YouTube links and all that stuff. I've read three of his books. One, uh, first book I read was a Black History Reader, 101 Questions You Never Thought to Ask. Awesome text. Next work I read was uh, Black Labor, White Wealth, Search for Power and Economic Justice, and finally his National Plan to Empower Black America, Poweronomics. Uh, and while this material may be slightly dated, I'm finding um, its relevancy indoors, because we're talking uh, 400 years of history here. You don't erase that overnight uh, and um, uh, kind of recovering from that is, is slow and painful. It's incremental. There's learning experience, fits and starts, our, our shining uh, moment, cohesive black moment would be the 60s, civil, civil rights, all the upheaval in the nation. Uh, but we've seen what works and what doesn't work, work from that. Um, so we're here just keeping keeping the uh, keeping our dream alive. You know, the Hispanic dreamers they kind of they got their dream kind of pushed through um, and got their needs met uh, pretty rapidly. Black folks. You know, we, we're all still going through our same old issues. Um, okay, having said that, we, um, I also want to include, let you know, every, every once in a while we'll have story time. Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe. We'll look at a fictional account of a slave's life. Well, well a couple slaves. Well, it's a very important book. I think it's, it has shaped um, some of the stereotypes between black and white. America, uh, and uh, I mentioned that uh, book also because we'll look at uh, a man named Tom's life and see if we can undo any um, false assumptions and myths about old Tom. Uh, you can see it behind me as well, hashtag us too, hashtag USTOO, and they are uh, black women meeting here. Uh, about the very relevant issues I check. I just look through there time to time, see what's the latest. Also, Black Enough, B-L-A-G-G-E-N-U-F. Uh, website is a good place uh, to gather and uh, mingle with some folks there. It's kind of like a Black Facebook. Excuse me. Okay, we're on day 67. We're talking about uh, some national action here um, with uh, debates and whatnot. You know, after um, we're going through this series now of uh, specific political action steps. Uh, we may have breezed over this before, but I wanted to take uh, some, we're going to take more time uh, as we go, we're going to focus in, get more myopic on uh, some of the issues about black life in America. After this series, I think we'll, we'll 
take check in on see how Uncle Tom is doing. But today, uh, it's out of uh, Dr. Anderson's book, Poweronomics. That's political action step number six, page two hundred two, and uh, we're talking about uh, political debates. I'm sorry, political debates, forums. And whatnot to uh, well, one to get us talking, and I think too is, is uh, he doesn't really mention it in this section, but I would th- it would give us some national visibility. It would let the nation, the communities, the world know that there's serious discourse going on amongst Black people. They're unified, and at least we're unified, and they're the uh, we're working out our internal struggles, uh, but the majority of us are, are working and making that happen. We're, we still got a long way to go to get uh, the majority of blacks on the same page, on one page. Uh, but uh, these, uh, any national debates, plans like that would help us um, internally as a group and uh, show the world that um, we're not just running helter skelter, doing our own thing, unorganized. Uh, a big part of the our this national action plan is going to be some quid pro quo. We've mentioned this before. Something for something, quid pro quo. If if we um, elect an, a politician, send that politician to office then it's their uh, responsibility to represent us. If they don't represent us, or get whatever platform they ran on, whether it's reparations, um, I don't know, affirmative action, something like that, if they don't deliver, then we would have the power to get them removed, replaced. Um, so we don't, right now, we don't do that uh, much. You know, um, some of our leaders, I think Dr. Anderson talks about uh, removing a person or, or holding a, a politician accountable, things like that. Those are rare circumstances. We, re- we would really like that to be the norm um, yeah, for our, the political leaders we send. We'd like that. Um, so it, there'd be some structure, there'd be enforcement. Uh, and, you know, these debates and all that, and we would hold them still being unified, maintaining unified. unity. So uh, we get we need an established process. We bring uh, re- through this. We bring respect to us. It'd be under black control, and we we would um, we would be exercising control. Very important 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 aspects to that right now we, we you know we, we bold and do stuff um, there's we can look back historically where once uh, blacks were migrating to the Republican Party uh, but then after white flight from Republican Party and off the Democrats I mean there's there's really no difference um, <laughs> you know the Republicans so blacks getting on board, then they run over to the Democrats. Now blacks are historically Democratic uh, supporters and things like that. And you see the whites migrating away. You know, they don't want to be too associated uh, with black causes, uh, but I mean, they'd readily be associated with the Hispanics and gays, handicapped, and I know a lot of other groups instead of uh, instead of help, helping out black folks. Uh, but we, we've kind of been conditioned for the hard life. Uh, although that, that should not be the norm, that you know, it shouldn't be a default position, but it just it's happened to be what we're going through right now. Um, we would need, uh, it would help us interact with other national leaders. You know, once once we get 
going. You know, I think think about some of the movement of the 60s, SNCC, and some of the big conferences we've had. I, I still see placards and advertisements when I'm out and about. I was on um, college campus today working on getting back to school to finish up my degree, and there were advertisements for black conferences and things like that. Which, I, you know, I don't get out much. <laughs> so uh, who am I to talk about this? But th these are important points. And, you know, and I'm glad that blacks are gathering uh, to some degree and organizing. Um, uh, so that's my fault. I, I need to get out a little more. Um, these, the, any kind of debates or plans would help us own, give us some ownership. You know, and I think, you know, it's like, um, like a story I heard about a man, he was on a ship and the captain said, go ahead, turn the wheel. And he turned the wheel any way you want. It's your, your ship. And the, the guy was up there playing with the wheel and turning the rudder and stuff like that. But because the ship wasn't moving, nothing was really happening. Um, so this, these, any kind of debates, national plans that were public and out there, uh, it, it would be a way of movement. And uh, from that movement, from that inertia, we'd see, um, from there, we would see how to um, adjust the message, see what's working and what's not. And, uh, you know, the idea, we, we we, this can't be theoretical. Um, it can't be a theoretical exercise to want to get together. Um, it's got to be public so we know um, what, what's going on, what's really working in uh, for black folks. In this way, um, the feedback that black leaders would get, you know, they would get to understand um, the nature of the race problem better. Because, you know, politicians may come from uh, challenging circumstances, but yet once they begin to successfully move in those circles, they might lose touch, you know, so... Uh, these debates, some feedback from the community would help them uh, focus their message. Um, it would, get, uh, would align us for steps for reparations. I'm work in a couple days. We'll talk about more specific uh, ideas about reparations for Black folks. You know, not just um, not just getting stuff, but being treated appropriately. Um, we, we're our, oh, uh, the black American is a, uh, you know, it sh it, this, the black American should be a, uh, a protected class, uh, at least a class recognized for enduring so much hardship, giving away free labor, um, and a lot of the other ills, bearing so much dysfunction of society, so that reparations would be a big step in uh, moving us forward. Uh, we would help develop plans to advance black entrepreneurship. And, you know, here we go. Now, blacks are, um, we're very blue collar minded. And we don't readily um, move towards entrepreneurship. I'm struggling trying to get, move myself to the next level right now. It's not easy. But so, so that's a, a problem uh, for blacks. Uh, you know, the Asians come to American communities looking for uh, businesses, start businesses, not looking for jobs. And uh, so much of our education was just it just some kind of breeding ground, training to be on someone else's plantation. Still, we're not we're not far from 
the fundam fundamentals of slavery, but to get blacks consistently thinking of uh, man managing, being managers, uh, entrepreneurs, things like that, uh, would be uh, such a big step to just put us there mentally. Uh, national debate, debates and feedback to these speakers would be a, go a long way. Um, it would uh, help allocate money to black communities. We could um, really begin finding ways to capture our dollars that we work for, we vertically integrate these businesses, ethno aggregate among our own people, and see those see those dollars circulate, kind of swirl around, and help galvanize and build uh, black communities. Uh, it'd be great to organize all the black millionaires. There's a lot of black folks doing well, you know, not just the entertainers and uh, sports people, um, but there's probably a lot of black folks we, we never see or hear of, for probably for good reason, <laughs> uh, but uh, bring them together oh, so that they can make some investments uh, into black folks, black communities. And uh, we, we, we just want to gather and secure our wealth and resources um, with one another. You know, a big uh, part as I get along, and I wrote this at the end of our brief notes today, is the elephant in the room idea. Uh, I think blacks are, we're, we're not taking advantage of a certain resource, a certain common denominator that can help propel us, help uh, bring that unity. I, I think it's a missing element, and the element is just simply slavery. I think it's more than being black. We need to be <sighs> the color of our skin naturally uh, binds us and um, brings us together. But do we have a shared experience, at least our ancestors do, and that should be more of a, uh, that could be more of a rally point for black folks. You know, these national debates, debates and all that, excuse me, I mean, I could picture, I, I mean, even if I went to one today, everybody would be dressed well, and uh, speaking nicely, putting on airs, there'd be a very churchy atmosphere to it, I'm guessing. Uh, the point is, we, we would never get to, we would never get to the reason why we're there. Therefore, uh, any outcome is, is going to be, it's not going to be built on, on, on a a good, a well laid foundation, and that a well laid foundation would be saying, you know, our ancestors were slaves. Listen, if you're, if you feel you aren't, you're not a uh, descendant of a slave, then uh, why are you even here trying to be a part of the movement? That would be one thing to get out the way, because, because uh, we, we got so many coming on board and being in aligned on skin color, but let's talk about experience. You know, P. Diddy's glad that he's not descended from slaves. He had a whole commercial about that. Yeah, so he shouldn't be at these uh, events. People like him. I should be. I know I'm a descendant of slaves. And I know um, uh, that Compensation, reparations, apologies, uh, all this great stuff, um, opportunities in business are challenging because of slavery, because of the past with slavery, because the, there's a history of black slaves being passive, um, 
settling for uh, symbols, things like that, you know, that that could be the slavery experience can be our rally point. We may not uh, have suffered whips, rapes, lynchings uh, as much as our ancestors, but there are still aspects of marginalization that uh, keep us bound, keep us guessing. Uh, well, I knew, let me take back lynching because uh, policemen are still shooting black men to death. You know, you don't hear you don't hear white white boys getting killed like uh, black guys do. That's amazing, and I'm, I mean there needs to be. Well, again, the government needs to step in and really start holding the, these police officers accountable. It's like, phew, I don't even want to be around the police, you know. And it's real sad. Then you we don't want them in our communities. Uh, because they're just going to come out with guns blazing. <laughs> uh, I'd have a better chance with the gangsters. My goodness. You know, so I won't, I won't go down that rabbit hole. Uh, but slavery is the big elephant in the room. You know, let's have slavery on CNN. Let's talk about slavery on Fox News. Mm hmm? You know, um, let, let's document it more. I don't want to see so many movies about slavery and, and dramatizations, fictional accounts. So let's keep going. Let's rehash it uh, until it's a part of the, of the social landscape to the degree that it brings consistent, permanent change to a specific class of people. Take the Jews Holocaust. You know, uh, Native Americans live, well, you know, any group of black groups have received some type of compensation for uh, being in this world, being a part of what um, what it means to take advantage of the wealth and resources of this nation. I, uh, so many groups, but you know, blacks don't. Uh, groups um, that have been our enemies and things like that. But you know, th this is what we would need national debates for and whatnot. You know, um, I personally, maybe I do need to check in on these national con conferences. Maybe they are being. Uh, specific and explicit about uh, ha having slavery the basis of these conversations um, around the color of, of our skin. For black people, we come in a lot of shades, but there are a lot of other peoples come in other shades too. You know, the Hispanic people have just a much a color. Um, color diversity as black folks, you know, but they get a whole lot more uh, recognition, reparations, uh, compensations, benefits than black folks, uh, guaranteed. Um, so there is a little, that's going to be a brief uh, little spiel today about uh, national debates, public debates, and what they would do, how they could be a vehicle um, to get us more recognition. You know, it's like so we can just keep ringing that bell louder, presenting a united front to our community, to ourselves, the nation, and the world. Um, uh, I hope it's moving in that direction. And um, you know, I'm foreseeing um, as you know, as I see signs up, and I've just I've started getting more emails from the Black Business School. You know, uh, check into the Black Business School; they have a lot of branches run by a man named Dr. Boyce Watkins. Um, I believe he's very sincere. Um, I, I've did some trials with some of his products over there, 
so I, I have good things to say. I just I just don't like the, some of the structure, uh, but I, I, I like what they're doing. Um, so check in with the community. Thanks for stopping by. Um, we're going to end right there, but uh, uh, think about national debates for black people. What you would say, what issues you would like uh, to be heard in those type of forums. I'm Thomas Nyback. That's 365 days towards racial change. We'll see you tomorrow.